Summary under the Lion's Paw by Hamlin Garland. At the beginning of Under the Lion's Paw, a man named Stephen Council is plowing his land. After the fall harvest, he is working hard and late into the night, even though it is snowing, raining, and very cold. He's trying to cheer up his horses by telling them they'll get oats and a warm stall after a hard day of work. When Council is finally done for the day, a stranger comes up to him. The stranger asks if he and his family could stay somewhere for the night. He has a wife and young children who are cold and hungry from their travels. Everyone they have asked for help has turned them down so far. Council helps the stranger right away and offers his home to him. He gets his horses there quickly, and Council helps him with the kids. The Councils invite the tired and downtrodden family into their house. Mrs. Council is said to be a happy, plump woman. She helps Mrs. Haskins, the stranger's wife, by feeding the kids and putting them to bed so that she can get some rest. Mrs. Haskins is moved by how kind Mrs. Council is. She cries tears of gratitude that fall on her sleeping baby and thinks that maybe the world isn't so cold and hopeless after all. While the women are taking care of the children, Council and Mr. Haskins start talking. Council starts talking about himself. He doesn't want to pry on his guest, so he just talks about himself to get the conversation going. Mr. Haskins has had a bad hand dealt to him. He tells the story in a quiet voice while he looks at the fire. He had always been wary of his land, especially since he was from northern Indiana, where it rains a lot and there are lots of trees. Nearly everything on their prairie had been destroyed by grasshoppers, making it impossible to live there or grow anything. The family of Haskins ran away. When Council heard about his trouble, they suggested that they look for land nearby. He tells them that a man named Butler wants to sell his land very badly. The Haskinses fall asleep after he says this. Jim Butler owns a lot of land, but he is careful to say that he can't pay his taxes because he is too poor. He makes money by speculating on land by buying a property that will go up in price, to ultimately be resold. He has been having trouble finding a tenant for a farm called the Higley Place, and this is what Council had in mind. The next morning, Council and Mr. Haskins went to the farm to find Butler. So he doesn't get a high price right away. Council asks if he has a relative in Michigan who might be interested in buying the Higley place. This is Mr. Haskins, of course. It looks like an agreement. The council agrees to give Mr. Haskins some help on his farm. Mr. Haskins gets angry at first because he doesn't know how to accept his kindness. Council says that helping out a neighbor is the kind of religion he has. Mr. and Mrs. Haskins work very hard to get their land in shape. Their oldest son works hard on the farm as a farmhand and helps out a lot. After years of hard work, the farm is finally getting wheat. Butler hadn't been to the farm in a long time, so Mr. Haskins showed him around. Butler is impressed by the big changes that the Haskineses have made to the house. The house's value has definitely gone up. When Mr. Haskins says he wants to buy the land for what it was originally sold for, Butler stops him. Since he saw how rich the land was, he has raised the price and now wants double what he said before. Mr. Haskins is angry that Butler would charge him for improvements that he himself made. He threatens Butler with a fork, but after seeing his daughter, he changes his mind. He tells Butler that Mr. Haskins will kill him if he doesn't sign the mortgage and leave the land. 